A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway prairie tank. Episode 7 Removing the Steam Dome template and making the wet header. In the previous episode I showed the fitting of this steam dome template. And now with the video running at four times normal speed, I'm unfitting it. The method that I used to fit this template is a pretty good idea really, particularly if it's not visible on the end product. I'm thinking that when I fit the inner steam dome, which I haven't made yet, I'm going to use the same method, but I will use steel cheese headed bolts. With the help of a ratchet socket, I'm now removing the wet header, or what's going to be the wet header very shortly. I didn't really have to go to the trouble of machining a nut on the end of this, but I just thought it was a good idea. These videos, after all, are designed to be tutorials. At the moment, I'm removing the brass 6BA bolts that hold the regulator flange in place. And now I can remove the regulator tube. A few viewers have asked me to clarify how the regulator works. All it is, is just an ordinary steam valve. Here's a schematic diagram that I drew on the piece of brass tube. Inside this part of the brass tube is a piece of phosphor bronze, and the short piece of copper tube is screwed into that. But at the other end of the phosphor bronze inside the tube is a hole, and the long regulator shaft, which has the thread on it, and that is a left-hand thread, Moving the regulator lever, which is connected to this long rod, from left to right, moves the pointer bit into the hole. Just like a normal steam valve, but in reverse. Steam valves normally open clockwise. This regulator is the other way round. And by opening and closing the regulator, this lets steam into the wet header that I'm about to make. It's part made anyway. On the drawing, it tells me that the flange for the wet header should be 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. But I've come across quite a lot of wet headers in model locomotives, where the threads in the flange have been torn out by over-tightening the bolts. So I'm going to make my wet header flange 5 sixteenths of an inch thick, which will allow for a good bit more thread. The drawing shows a lot of small bolts around the wet header to hold it in place. I'm going to use less of them but they're going to be larger bolts. Instead of 4BA or 5BA, I'm going to use 2BA. In this clip, as you can clearly see, I'm parting off the nut, which I made in the last episode. And once this is done, the parts that are left will become the wet header with another parting operation. As soon as the parted off piece fell into the chip tray, I changed the tool and here I'm facing across the end. Once I'd faced across the front of the part, I used a chamfering tool to remove the sharp edge. I overdid it a bit, it doesn't need to be as chamfered as this, but I'll show you what happens later on. Now it's over to the milling machine, which is still set up as a drilling machine, and I'm going to drill four holes all the way through the wet header. And to make sure that these four holes are as accurately drilled as possible, I'm using the rotary table. This time it's initially set to 0 degrees, then 90, 180 and then 270 degrees. And once I'd centre drilled the holes, I fitted a twist drill. This is a 5 30 seconds of an inch twist drill, which is tapping size for 2BA. After drilling these holes just over half the way down the work, and I still used the rotary table to drill every one, but this time 270, 180, 90 and then back to 0 degrees. Why did I do that? Well, it's an attempt to make sure these holes are very accurate. I do not want the drill to wander about inside the work at all. This job took a while, but it's worth it in the end. While I'm doing it, I think I'll just tell you something about regulators. This regulator is called a screw type regulator, and it's one of the simplest types of regulator and very reliable from a model point of view. Another popular type of regulator, which is a special thing that sticks up inside the steam dome, is known as a Stroudley regulator. I'll put the name on screen. This type of regulator was developed by William Stroudley, who was the chief mechanical engineer of the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. A Stroudley regulator is a slide valve type of regulator operated by a linkage up inside the steam dome. Because the slide valve is inside the boiler, it's not getting much in the way of lubrication, and they have been known to suffer from scoring of the slide valve and the port face, on models anyway. 
Slide valves work very well with lubrication, but without lubrication they can be problematic, in the same way as a traction engine regulator which is also a slide valve regulator. In a model locomotive I prefer the screw type every time. After I've finished drilling all the holes, I put the part in the lathe and skimmed it to deburr it. And in this clip I'm separating the flange from what's going to be the wet header fitting that bolts to the flange. Whenever you part things off where you're going through holes in the parts, be very careful because they can catch up and even break the parting tool and ruin the part you're working on. So take it easy as you go past the part that has the holes in it. Once I've parted off the wet header, I faced across the front of it to make sure it was perfectly flat and square. After facing across the front, I reversed the tool and took the finest of cuts. This needs to be a perfect mating surface with the flange. Talking about the flange, this is the flange fitted in the chuck and I'm holding it by the threads so I'm taking very very fine cuts, I do not want it to jump out of the chuck. After I'd finished doing that I cleaned up the edge with a file. I took the wet header over to the milling machine. Put it back in the rotary table and here I'm drilling through using a clearance size drill for 2BA which is 3 16 of an inch. And once again to make sure it is as accurate as possible before I drill each of the holes I set the rotary table to 0 90, 180 and 270 degrees. And now for the last time it's back into the lathe chuck to face across the end of it. You can see that I'm machining away most of the chamfer but there's still a tiny chamfer left. Even after this job there's still some more work to do on the wet header. I need to drill a hole in one side of it. For now though here are the parts so far on the bench. This has taken quite a while to manufacture. On the right hand side is the wet head of flange and you will notice it is 5 sixteenths of an inch thick, not 3 sixteenths thick as it says on the drawing and the one on the left is the main wet header that bolts to it. Frequently I receive emails from people asking me if I could finish their locomotive and the story usually goes I have this locomotive, my grandfather made it and it's been in the shed for 25 years and it needs finishing. It's almost there, it just needs the boiler fitting and the cab and the tanks making and the piping etc. OK, I do realise that most people do not have a clue when it comes to the workings of a miniature steam locomotive. But as you're watching this series, which is already at part 7, you will start to see just how much work is involved in just putting the thing together that doesn't include repairing any parts that are faulty and on this one many of the mechanical parts need attention. Small steam locomotives like this simplex are quite easy to build but as you can see not that easy. Sadly most of them are not easy to build. That's why you see a lot of part finished locomotives for sale on eBay. Often the builders just run out of steam so to speak. And that's it for this episode, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.